To start, I needed some tweets, so I used an API called Twint to grab a bunch of tweets that mentioned a specific list of companies established in a file from a specific list of accounts. I kept these both short for testing purposes. Once I had a lot of tweets stored in a JSON file, I tried to start working on my model. And while I did have a very beginner understanding of artificial intelligence, specifically machine learning, and even more specifically deep learning, I didn't really know how to translate that into code. So over the course of the next 10 days, I learned the basics of TensorFlow, a module designed to help data scientists create neural networks. It was first made in-house by Google, but later made open source. To learn TensorFlow and deep learning, I used two resources the official TensorFlow docs, and Daniel Baroque's Learn TensorFlow in 10 Hours tutorial. I'll have the links to both in the pinned comment. Once I had learned the basics, I tried my hand at creating a sentiment analysis model. Though, there was one more problem. I had to turn words into tensors, which are basically numerical representations for data types that a computer can understand. My first thought was to one-hot encode words. This would basically generate a large number for each word, mostly consisting of zeros, but it would have one one, and that one's location would tell us which word we're looking at. There were two problems with the solution. One, it was incredibly slow, and two, it failed to understand the relationship between words. So back to the drawing board. What if instead of representing text as huge numbers, we just start counting from zero? For example, hi could be zero, and hello could be 84. As I thought more about the solution, I found that while it was faster than the solution before, it was still incredibly inefficient, and it too failed to understand the relationship between words. So, feeling unsatisfied, I searched the holy TensorFlow docs and found something called word embeddings. The TensorFlow docs tells us that, quote, word embeddings give us a way to use an efficient, dense representation in which similar words have a similar encoding. What this basically means is that every word in our vocabulary will be assigned a unique vector. But the real kicker here is that word embeddings display the relationship between words. For example, cat and dog are similar words. Therefore, during training, the numerical values for these vectors will get closer as the model realizes the relationship between the words. So now it was time to write some code. But right as I got to this, I hit another massive roadblock, data. I needed data to create my model, specifically data with labels. So I needed words, sentences, or paragraphs with numerical ratings based on their positivity or negativity. And as I dug a little deeper, I found out about the large IMDb movie dataset, a dataset that stored a bunch of movie reviews with scores according to their positivity or negativity. With this, I was able to start coding. My model.py file consisted of downloading the large dataset, cleaning the dataset up, vectorizing and splitting my dataset into training, validation, and testing sets, creating a model, and compiling that model with an atom optimizer, which is basically a method for the model to get better, and a binary cross-entropy loss function, which is simply a specific loss function for values ranging from 0 to 1. What are loss functions, you ask? Well, loss functions are ways for us to measure how wrong our model is on average with the training data. I then fit my model and trained it for 15 epochs. You can think of epochs like rounds. It's how many times the model gets to train with the data. Now, you might be asking, why so few epochs? More is always better, right? Well, it's not always the case. If you train your model for too long, it can get too used to the data it trained with and form overly specific connections. But if you train it for little, it simply won't have enough time to learn the patterns. The trick is finding the sweet spot. Growing on the last point, we can't really use a model's accuracy on a training set as an accurate form of measurement. We must introduce it to a new set of data to test with. That's where our testing set comes in. From our testing set, we can see that our model is right about 87% of the time, which isn't too bad. But right now, our model can only process pre-vectorized strings, so we must create another deployment model that can process raw strings. And with that, I created a function that we could access from other files. Now, let's shift gears back to our tweets.py script. When I tried to link my code and loop through the tweets, I found that my previously written code was terrible. I was reading companies from a text file when I could just use a numpy array, which is much faster. 
I also had no way of knowing which company I was dealing with when reading from a JSON file after I had already collected the tweets. So instead of working with the mess I previously had, I simply deleted everything and restarted. The first thing I did now was organize my tweets into a pandas data frame, and this time I created a function to search my tweets. I took parameters account and company in. The plan was to perform sentiment analysis while I was still in the loop. This allowed me to keep track of what company I was on. Speaking of, I created a dictionary, often called a hash map in other languages, where one value was my company and the other value was my company score. For now, my company score was simply just the average of all my sentiments minus 0.5 to produce negative numbers. So then, after fixing up some bugs behind the scenes, I had my minimum viable product. Yet, there were still some things that I wanted to finish. First, these opinions didn't represent the public opinion of a company. They represented the mass opinions of stock gurus. So I simply deleted my account list. But when I did this, my program took way too long to run as I was processing too many tweets. That's when I found that Twint had a feature that allowed me to pick a set number of tweets around a topic at random. So basically, I was able to limit how many tweets I was working with. So once I implemented this, my code ran just fine. The next major issue I had to deal with was that not all tweets should be weighed equally. For example, if a tweet has 100 likes and 7 retweets, it should have more weight than a tweet with 1 like and 0 retweets. And as I started to implement this, my code got messier and messier. So in the end, I decided to create a class tweet and make all my tweets objects. This made the job much simpler and easier. Lastly, the model would train every time, and this made my program quite slow. So I functionalized the training process and saved the model as an H5 file. Once I finished these final touches, I finally pushed one more commit to GitHub. And while I do want to improve this program down the line, for now, I'm done.